America has voted. President Barack Obama will return to the White House for a second term. Hello and welcome to this special edition of News Scene. I'm Ronnie Wade. And I'm Dallas Richter. Thank you for joining us. It's been a long campaign season. Tonight we will have an in-depth look into the presidential election. And we'll take a closer look at the elections here in San Diego. We also have the latest on California's propositions. We will tell you which ones passed and which ones fell short. On a tense election night, President Obama was in his hometown of Chicago. He addressed the nation for the first time after being reelected. Thank you. Thank you. And whether I earned your vote or not, I have listened to you. I have learned from you. And you've made me a better president. And with your stories, and your struggles, I return to the White House more determined and more inspired than ever about the work there is to do and the future that lies ahead. Republican nominee Mitt Romney fell short of electoral votes to take over the White House. Standing in front of a crowd of supporters in Boston, Romney congratulated President Obama on his victory. I so wish that I had been able to fulfill your hopes to lead the country in a different direction. But the nation chose another leader, and so Ann and I join with you to earnestly pray for him and for this great nation. Thank you, and God bless America. The long campaign season came to a close on Tuesday night, and the Democrats were out in their best blue to celebrate. I went to the Weston downtown with photojournalist David Matris to get a closer look. Tuesday night was a night of victory for San Diego Democrats and Democrats across the country. Before the results were in, supporters looked on anxiously as some states were won and some were lost. But in the end, it was clear. Obama's message of hope and change of 2008 is very much alive in 2012. And we know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come. Emotions were running high as voters reflected on what this election means to them. It means the world to me as a woman, as a woman um, of color, I'm Mexican, so this election was everything to me. I was just in Nevada every weekend campaigning to get the vote out in Nevada, so I just, I'm so emotional right now. Many people were relieved to see the work they had done on the Obama campaign pay off. Uh, it's, it's been an, an emotional wreck for me, you know, I, I've been supporting Obama now for the last six years, doing what I can, making phone calls, donating as much money as possible. Um, and just trying to get as many friends and family members to go out and just vote. 303 electoral votes later, Obama supporters across the country had something to celebrate. Ready to go! Ready to go! And at the Westin in downtown San Diego, the festivities lasted until the early morning, with drinking, dancing, and a celebration of not just Obama's win, but of all the Democratic wins of the night. Even though Mitt Romney lost the election, there's a newfound sense of unity and willingness to reach across the aisle between the two parties. Many Americans are anxiously waiting to see what the future of our country holds. And you know, Ronnie, it was really fun to go down there and see the Democrats come out, not for just Obama, but for all of the candidates. It was a lot of energy. It made me really proud. That sounds like a great opportunity. For San Diego Republicans gathering in downtown San Diego Tuesday night, News Scene's Paul Cruz found out that the party never really got started. The scene Tuesday night in downtown San Diego was really no different than from four years ago. That's when San Diego Republicans quietly gathered to watch then-president-elect Barack Obama's victory speech after defeating Senator John McCain. After watching with great anticipation Governor Mitt Romney's initial electoral college lead skid off course as the president sprinted to the finish line, the party ended just as quietly as it had started. Although the polls have just closed here on the West Coast, the Republicans here at their party at the U.S. Grand Hotel are decidedly very quiet. While Obama handily won re-election, Republican Congressman Duncan Hunter himself, re-elected in a redistricted 50th Congressional District, says that the Republican delegation intends to keep pursuing with the president the matter of the September 11th terrorist act in Benghazi, Libya. What, what happened in, in Benghazi needs, needs to be figured out every single thing that happened, because here, here's what you have. In, in the end, the uh, president said that he directed his people to protect our people over there. Either the military disobeyed him 
or he never gave that order and he didn't tell the truth about it. So we're going to find out which one it is. So the politics of governing 50 diverse states go on with little or no change. At the U.S. Grand Hotel in downtown San Diego, I'm Paul Cruz, New Scene. The effects of Hurricane Sandy are still being felt on the East Coast. In New York, cleanup measures are underway as residents struggle to return to normalcy. For some residents, even the elections took a back seat. Others chose not to let Sandy keep their vote from being counted. Priority is getting myself reorganized at my home. That's it. Politics has no meaning. Romney, Obama, none of them really matter. New York residents affected by Hurricane Sandy were, al were allowed to cast their ballots at any polling place with a signed affidavit. And while the East Coast had some difficulties voting, the rest of the U.S. made their made it out to the polls. Joining us now is Alex Miller for story with a look at how voters in the country voted this election. Alex? Thank you, Dallas. Well, the big news on the national front is that the president will remain the president. The surprising news is that it all unfolded with as much ease as it did. Let's take a look at this map, which identifies the swing states, the battleground states in yellow. And if you take these states, you take the whole election. Now, if you're a campaign strategist, you might see the country a little bit differently. If you can bring up that next map, this is how it looks. California here, you can see, is pretty big in comparison with the, um, with the other states, and that's because uh, we have 55 electoral votes. Now, Montana is pretty small. There it is. Montana is pretty small because they only have three electoral votes. So this is kind of a different way of, of looking at the breakdown. Um, this is how it all shook out. And I want to show you something. Florida. Florida is the only state that still doesn't know uh, which way, which, which uh, candidate they've elected. And there were some who um, projected that Florida would be a key state in how everything was decided. And it is a really good thing because if this election hinged on Florida, we, <laughs> we wouldn't know who the president is. So um, let me give you some total numbers. Uh, the president needed 270 electoral votes to win. He got 303 to Romney's 206. Now, this election wasn't won entirely on the airways. We would like to introduce you to Jonathan Verdugo. He's a City College student and campaigner who spent a lot of time pounding the pavement. Hello, David. Uh, my name's Jonathan. I'm a student intern calling from the American Federation of Teachers. By the time I was a freshman in high school, I got arrested my first time ever. And by the time I was 15, I started using meth. My lifestyle was get locked up, do a couple months, get out, go on the run again, start using drugs again, go gangbang, go rob, go steal, go put in work, as we like to call it. Most of my life, we spent it in a two-bedroom duplex. By the time I was like 13, 14, and my stepdad started doing drugs, and I didn't really know this, but my mom too. You know, it was easy for me to kind of start finding friendships that maybe at that time, I didn't know weren't good for me, but they were there. I would get out and that environment would still be there. So even if I got out with kind of like a mentality like, all right, this time I'm going to change, this time I am, I would just get out and be the same thing. When I was uh, about to turn 17, I actually got sentenced to, it was my longest sentence. It was um, nine months to Camp Barrett. While I was in there, I was working out. I, was, I, I got real buff, you know, real strong. And I felt good about myself. So I started keeping journals of just being there. And yeah, that kind of started it, you know. I, I got out and I was able to get off the drugs. And it, t it took several months for me to even find a job because it was just so hard, that transition. It showed me like, man, you know, you really have to work for what you want. The next several years, I'm still with my girlfriend, but I'm still a part, a part of the, the gang, you know, the gang culture. The day she was giving birth, I was actually getting in a fight in my old neighborhood. Just seeing my son, and, and I remember, you know, when he was born, and just, just thinking to myself, promising myself, like, no matter what I have to go through, that kid, that life, he's, he's not going to experience what I, what, what I experienced. He's not going to grow up how I grew up, you know? He provided for me something that the life I was 